Actually, I'm going to go back because um, Jeff, uh, his closing was moved earlier and is totally overwhelmed. <laughs> and he will not be here. He will not be here. Okay. So you win another private lesson. Okay. <laughs> so we'll. Uh, You'd like to turn your chair around. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, <laughs> so, how are things on the other side of the bridge? Oh, cooler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> you know, yesterday was quite nice. Oh, it was a lovely day yesterday. Yeah. This morning was pretty nice too. Yeah, it's still only 75, by the way. Clock uh, yeah. thermometer. I mean, my car thermometer. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're good. You know, getting through the nonsense was easy this morning. <laughs> the bridge and the yeah. roundabout. Oh, how is that going to be making progress on the roundabout? It's just, uh, I'm eager to see what it, when the shape starts taking place, mm. because it's mostly underground right now, drainage systems and um, yeah. things of that sort that, you know, I could. And of course, when you drive through, uh, if you're behind the steering wheel, you don't, you can't sit and walk. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> uh, but they do a lot of uh, moving of earth and rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not sure what it's all about. You know. Uh, well, it's a bulldozer. Well, as you're approaching the connector on the right side, there's a bulldozer smoothing that whole area out this morning. Oh. I, yeah. But it's eight or ten feet up from the road surface. So I don't I oh. uh, I don't know if they're going to build the whole thing up or why they're spending time. Smoothing it out, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> hard to know. Yeah, I should just take a walk down there someday and sit there and supervise for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Might be fun. <laughs> well, oh, it'll all come together eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just. Pretty much try to avoid it as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we drive down on the other side of the river to mm -hmm. uh, Old Line and yeah. Old Saybrook. So, but occasionally we have to go to Middletown. We, we we can do it without crossing the river there, but it's a lot faster if we can get across. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, you just have to go up 51. And... Well, we go across uh, 151. Yeah, uh, yeah, 151. Yeah, 151. yeah, right. Yeah. <clears throat> That's how we do. Well, I guess we should get this underway. <laughs>
You have extra special good energy today. <laughs> it, it isn't mine, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I feel calm, but I don't I feel like I have a, an abundance of energy. <laughs> um, so, questions? Um, better week for practice? A better week for practice, I think. You know, uh, at least fairly regular. Uh, not as much as I would have liked, but. Uh, I think every day but one. So well that's good. That's good. That's very good. Yeah. So uh, so no questions. Um uh, I was working on my elbows. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh and there were a couple of times that I had aha uh -huh experiences of the elbows driving the whole thing you know, along uh -huh. with the shoulders. Oh, good. And the the hands didn't really need to be doing much except responding to the elbows. Yep. <laughs> good. Uh, why it's taken years for that to <laughs> sink in, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's not that you haven't mentioned it. <laughs> uh, that is, it, I, have, I don't know if I've ever told you this uh, uh, or not. Jeff's probably heard it. Um, when I first started studying Tai Chi, uh, I was with another teacher. And um, after about I think it was three or three and a half years. Uh, it was a class in which he had each student um, flow individually and then made some general comments. And when I got done, he said, well, you know all the postures. You know where you want to end up. But he said, you still don't have any idea about whole body movement. And I was devastated. <laughs> I thought, but I, I thought I did. <laughs> um, it so happened that that was just before I went to the farm the first time, the Taiji farm, um, and worked with Master Joe. Mm -hmm. And in that first weekend, he taught me whole body movement. Huh? And he wasn't teaching me as a, a private student. I was just one of actually several hundred people there. But in one weekend, all of a sudden it was there. So um, don't feel bad, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I also try to work on keeping the flow going in the form uh -huh. um, and try to notice the whole body movement mm. uh, more so than I than I have been. I'm going to uh, turn things up. Okay. But uh, no uh, questions. So, have I ever mentioned the concept of breathing without breathing? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Jeff will definitely have heard that before. <laughs> this is a concept that Master Joe taught. 
which actually um, he had a, a Taoist uh, writing that um, spoke at some length about it. All it's really saying is not saying you don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> you you did understand that I know. Um, all I'm saying is that it's not necessary to align the breath with the movement all the time, and certainly in the form, it's very clear that we don't try to align the breath with all the movement, or we would be uh, having one long breath and then a terribly short one, and then a yeah, yeah. medium one, and then a short one again, or whatever. Um, all of which would be very ineffective, and we would be ending up creating pauses between the inhales and the exhales, as we exhale and the inhale which of course is another way of interrupting the flow of the yeah. energy. So all this concept is really saying is learning to keep the breathing continuous um, with no breaks whatsoever. So finding how you, in effect, round the the connection between your inhale and your exhale, or the exhale and the inhale. Um, and one of the things that, that I was thinking about was that um, with the eight gate standing work, that that might be a good concept to use in order to really slow it down if you wanted to. Okay. Not necessarily. Um, you're pretty good, actually. You're you are able to slow your breath um, uh, pretty well, um, but that allows you to take all the pressure of aligning with the breath away. And I will say that when I concentrate on breath, uh, I I almost always build in pauses. Yep. Uh, it, I try to extend or I try to uh, join the in and out together, you know, completely or uh, whatever. But, you know, when I concentrate, it is not smooth. Yeah. Um, and that, I think that's why the Taoists develop uh, the concept. Because if, if you don't have to align your breath with your movement, then um, that allows you to simply breathe. Mm -hmm. And but you have to keep it going. And sometimes that gets difficult because we want to align the breath with the movement. That's kind of a natural. Yeah, I, I think I find it easier to align it in gods than in. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then in the eight gates? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's good to recognize that that's not absolutely required. Yeah. And um, since you mentioned gods, I will just say that that one of the things that um, Bruce talks about when you get into more advanced levels is that none of the principles that we use to learn the movements are necessarily required. You may do the opposite of what was the way that I taught a movement, for instance, in terms of alignment of breath or uh, um, even things like bending and stretching. And if, if they work 
if they are more effective in their opposite flow, and which sounds counterproductive actually uh, at first, but um, it's kind of interesting that when you are solely focusing on the internal energy movement, um, it isn't necessarily only one way. Um, so staying open to flexibility. Yeah, and I think I'm understanding that a little bit uh, now that we've reached the whole body movement <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, when I feel that uh, going on, at least at my level, I, you know, it feels like it's not necessary to be religious about you know, mm -hmm. you know, every single thing. You know, yeah. That it's a uh, thing of itself. You yeah. Know, uh, yeah. Going on. And um, just speaking of gods, I mean, even even when you're aligning the breath with the movement, the breath is changing in gods. It's not the same in every movement. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and it gets slower as you go along, obviously, or usually. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I think I'm noticing probably the slowest in that group. Uh, mm. um, Generally, uh, yeah. I feel like I ought to hurry up. <laughs> Adam's capable of going quite slowly, but yeah. Uh, he, yeah, it, it feels like he's he's just overwhelmed these days. Yeah, well, he is. Uh, but, <laughs> so, um, let's uh, let's do the eight gates. Mm -hmm. um, I am very interested in what's happening with your elbows. <laughs> with my elbows. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll I'll try to pay attention to that. Yeah. Um, well, I, it's it's not consistent, uh, that's for sure, but, you know, I, I have. Well, you do the best you can do. Yeah. Stepping out. Just standing for a moment. I'm very aware of your structure. Making sure everything is open. It needs to be open. Not collapsing anywhere. And breathing down to the Dantian. And as much of the sides and back as possible. And allowing yourself to return to Wuji, ultimate nothingness. With a release throughout the entire body.
Maybe take a moment and sink whatever energy the body cannot use into the earth. And then extending the mind through the body. Don't you begin to feel what is happening everywhere in the body? Flowing with the
Progress. Um, I felt there was more bending than circularity. Okay. Um, more in some postures than others. Um, I think the the first two um, um, are coming along um, definitely. Um, when you got to Khan, um, it's a tough one in a way <laughs> because um, you have to get the el you, without losing the the connection to the scapula. You've got to get the elbow to come in and up and out. And you have to do it without lifting the shoulders. Yes. <laughs> um, so so it, it's really, you're really looking for the circularity. And it can be very small. It does not have to be big. Um, Uh, this one um, is this. this I, I can understand having a little difficulty with this one, but here the interesting thing is that the circle is this way <laughs> of the elbows. So it the elbows are coming in and out, and in and out. Yeah, and um, so that's a that's a small one there. Mm -hmm. Th this seemed pretty much okay. Um, I think I didn't look at you in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, I uh, this one uh, is similar to to what we've been doing, but. Um, so really just trying to find the circularity in each of those. Um, and, and really focusing on that, not worrying about all the other stuff, because <laughs> um, I think you're Actually, when you when you focus on it, you're very good with the bending and stretching and the twisting. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of gets lost as you focus on the elbows, but that's part of learning a new element. Yeah. So don't don't be disturbed particularly by that. I think when when the Circularity of the elbow movement is comfortable that you can bring the others back without much difficulty. Okay. So any questions in there? Uh, an odd question, not at all about what we're talking about. Okay, right now. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> but um, when we're standing to begin with, you know, yeah. and you say concentrate on whatever is going on in your body, you know, get in touch with everything. I have always been hyper aware <laughs> uh, of this and that about my body. You know, uh, I can- What do you mean by this and that? <laughs> well, especially it's, um, 
certainly the outside the skin uh -huh. i can i can identify an itch you know mm -hmm. right there very very uh -huh. easily uh -huh. and a lot I, I i mean i'm always aware of the surface of my body uh -huh. um and to a lesser extent of what's going on a little pitch here or an ache there or whatever inside. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering whether that hyper awareness blocks my ability to understand, you know, being in touch with your body in a Tai Chi way. Um, so Uh, being aware of the physical since since you're <laughs> in the gods class but being aware of the physical body obviously is one is a beginning stage yeah and clearly that's no problem for you yeah um being aware of the etheric body is um not as easy. I mean, each of the each of the energy bodies as they move out away, and it, even as they move into the body, become each one becomes a little more difficult at first to be aware of. Um, so. I think what I'm thinking is, yeah, you've got the physical body, that's great, but let go of it. <laughs> because if, unless there's something you need to yeah, resolve or, 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 or yeah, or, yeah, or, or, whatever. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's that would be the uh, thing to focus on at that first, but then let go of that if you can. Yeah. Try to let it not intrude, but be just a level uh, of awareness. Yeah. I think some of that is going on in gods. Mm. Um, uh, Should be. <laughs> not all the movements yet. Four certainly. I can. I can. I can sense what I think is the etheric body, uh -huh. you know, but I, I honestly don't have a sense of much beyond a couple of inches beyond beyond my hand. Mm -hmm. um, That's fine. When we were talking about the emotional body, yeah. Uh, um, I can feel it in two and five, mm -hmm. hmm. less so in three and six, I would say. Three, I don't, I, I'm not practiced enough at seven to, I mean, the, the, the sense of the etheric body in seven is just simply not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, yeah. three is always <laughs> tough. <laughs> it's been tough from the beginning. <laughs> um, and you know, um, that level of awareness and practice, um, we can talk all day about, but there's no way for me to say to you exactly how to do it uh, yeah. or exactly what it feels like to you. Yeah. Um, so. Um, you know, I tend to be somebody who wants an exact answer, but, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it would be nice if there were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, we we can be you know we're able to be more exact about um 
you know, bending and stretching and twisting and and all of those things. Yeah, they're visible. Yeah. They're visible. Yeah. But the energy bodies are not. I mean, we can certainly see the physical body, but um, feeling it is something else. Yeah. Um, and it's <laughs> it's like a lot of other things. Um, we don't grow up with those concepts. Mm. And so what would be what's easy for a Chinese child is still difficult for a Western adult. Um, so that's not that's not saying you know that that um, you can't or won't or whatever, um, but it is more difficult for us. And some of us, uh, as I've said repeatedly, some of us have an easier time of it than others. So, yeah. You know, it's a case by case. We're each individuals. And um, the fact that you are beginning to feel a couple of inches into the etheric body is great. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's a step forward. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly, um, think just thinking about what we're working on in gods. Um, I don't expect anybody in the class to be feeling much of the emotional or mental body at this point. Um, something, you know, maybe Adam or Joanne more than, than the others, mm -hmm. the rest of the class, maybe Carol too. But that's because they've been doing it a lot longer. Um, but Everybody's different. You're, you're not bad. <laughs> no, I'm not beating myself up about it. Oh, know. good. Uh, good. Uh, so, yeah. So, um, we were sort of beginning to work through the form and refine a bit. Okay. Um, and I quite frankly don't remember how far you've gone with that. Well, uh, we've you... gone up, uh, up to single whip a couple of times and <laughs> worked, you know, yeah. on that primarily. Um, uh, and I practiced the whole thing, not every time, but, you know, yeah. Uh, So, I still have uh, difficulty at the very start, um, especially moving from Bung and G to you. Uh -huh. uh, I and trying not to think about what's coming so much <laughs> because I think when I do that, I simply stop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I was trying to work on that. Uh, oh, good. Particularly, uh, and as I said, you know, trying to sense the whole body-ness of it, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, we, we've talked about this a lot, but really making that connection to where the qua, the dantian, and the spine cause the movement. Um, it's it's just key. I mean, that's <laughs> that's the core. Um, and and our problem is that we want to make uh, the legs or the arms the leaders. Yeah, uh, 
Certainly, at, at the beginning, that's what one sees. Mm -hmm. The arms are moving, the hands are going here, there, yeah, uh, or ending up here and there. <laughs> uh, so, you know, okay, if it ends up here, I need to go like that somehow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, that's where you begin. Yeah, of course. Of course. But what we're trying to find is how, how do we get um, beyond that? Yeah. I imagine it's similar to the way we were talking about the elbows and the scapula and the, mm -hmm. the, the gates, you know, driving the thing as opposed to moving the hands around. Yep. You know? yep. And so this is. Uh, I think the claw. I am more in touch with in mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about God, yeah, you know, uh, you know mm -hmm. more in touch with the claw there than the lower Dantian. Uh, mm -hmm. um, as a driving force. Um really that the Dantian, of course, is the the center point of the of the five extremities, and we're we're endeavoring to get the energy. Or the, one of the ways we want the energy to move is from the center to the five extremities and back to the center. So that, excuse me. Uh, that of course comes from um, this this causing all the movement, not uh, being the center of all the movement. So when I begin, notice that that that's causing my arms to bend and twist. This is it. My body is and then my body moves the leg my body moves the arms in the position and my body they want to you're, you're trying to keep getting that connection um, and that's why um five extremities practice is, is really good because it makes you focus on the center as well as the five extremities. Mm -hmm. But if you can be aware that uh, the energy goes to the crown of the head, the fingertips and the toes, and then comes into the center. It goes out to the five extremities. And so this is a, um, another reason why slowing things way down initially can be really helpful because it gives you time to really feel that. Um, not, I'm not suggesting it's easy. <laughs> but um, why don't you uh, go into the flow mm -hmm. and just try to slow it down as much as you possibly can. Um, not, and not worrying about the breath other than making it continuous.
Let's pause there. Um, one of the things I would say, I've noticed that, that in the um, shoulder, you were too far forward, even for white uh, boots. Uh, so that's a tough one in that we, we want, when we, <clears throat> when we step um, uh, in, into that uh, corner, and we we go to shoulder. We don't want to be all the way at our at our dynamic loop yet. It's still got a little bit more because then you can use that forward motion and the rotation to drive the arms into the posture. Okay, so I was over here to begin with, and I had. Yeah, nowhere to go except no felons. Yeah, <laughs> and and the reason why you go backwards in move uh, is that you're stepping too far forward. So, in other words, um, it, it is possible, um, perhaps, <laughs> to root here, but as soon as you go here, it gets much more difficult. So making sure that you don't step too far forward in those follow steps um, just give you a little more stability to, to build on. Okay. Um, also, really being aware that if your body stops moving, everything else stops moving. Where does that happen? <laughs> Like four or five places at least that I saw. But for instance, it, um, in, in going in into single whip, you went and the body stopped and the arms went. Huh. Um, so that's part of being aware of the connection between the Dan Tian and, and the arms. Um, trying to feel what I did, yeah, or didn't do. <laughs> well, it's you know, it's it hard to just, um, but you know, you you make that step, and then you want to keep the body continuously shifting, rotating to here, but only to here, not. To hear where the other heel starts to get light. Because if you were to pull on my arm, you could pull me right over without any difficulty. But here, I can move. Um, so it's okay. So I'm, yeah. So but that I can feel. I mean, yeah. that I, I go too far and over and front. Yep. Um, so, um, part of <laughs> part of learning to to make the Dan Tian important both energetically and phys physically is really being aware of what it's doing all the time, and if it stops moving, then either there has to be an internal movement that um, coordinates with what's happening or everything has to stop. Yeah. Um, actually, in the Wu Yu Jiang classic, that's what it says. It says if, if any part of the body stops, every part of the body stops. And if every part of the body moves if any part of the body moves then every part of the body can move and it's <laughs> that's about as clear as you can be yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, about i mean that makes perfect sense you know getting it into practice yeah. but i'm thinking that we've been concentrating on Concentrate. We've been talking a lot more about 
keeping the focus small mm. throughout. Um, and if I could really concentrate on that, that would probably help a lot of these things because yep. this is simply a matter of too big. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not simply, but yeah. No, no, no I, you're absolutely right. So if I could, and that would help me instead of worrying about what's going on out here, worrying about what's going on in here. Yep. No, I think you're right. Good. Good thought. Um, yes, it, it, <laughs> it really does, unfortunately, come down, of, of course, to practice. Yeah. Um, and uh, not feeling that that you necessarily have to flow every time you practice. Maybe your practice, you just got a, a posture or two or three or five or six that you want to focus on um, and clarify that piece of it. Um, it it's uh, the flow is good. A good thing to do, but um, it also takes a, a little bit of time. And uh, depending on what one's schedule is, uh, you know. So, um, why don't you just do that much again and see if you can um, focus a little bit more on, on uh, not overdoing at all, but keeping everything moving together. Okay. Uh, actually, um, certainly the, the first part was a, a lot better. Um, I see what um, in, in single whip, what will help there, I think. Because <laughs> um, you're, you're twisting in you're twisting out now. I had my foot wrong. Notice that the turn, the placing of that left foot occurs while you're rotating. Uh uh. What you did was. <laughs> Again. Oh. This is, you're rooted on this leg, and all you're doing is rotating and twisting in. Nope, you went forward.
and went forward. So better, and and you took a smaller step, and that's fine. Um, but I think what's happening is that when you come back onto the right foot, mm -hmm. you're not going to a hundred percent. You have to go to where that left foot is simply turned and then you have all the shift and rotation to do the rest of the movement. Yeah. That's a big change. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's small, but it's a, you know, yeah. uh, you know completely different. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing I noticed that I think can help um, is, um, is it okay here? If you really are careful about bending and twisting in as you step back here, that gives you the ability to expand out as you rotate back. So that there is, there is this in that movement, boom. Um, you know, you your know. tendency is to keep it in, and then when you do that sh that rotation, you're supposed to bend in more. You're already bending. Yeah. So if you go really out, then there's some place to come in from, and then go out again. Yeah. You know, I can uh, feel myself being stiff in the pull down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, straight. Yeah, rather than yeah, so I think those would help um, in those spots, and and continuing to uh, to work on not um, uh, not going too far forward here. Yes, there's a little forward. But save a little for this. Is that? Yes, it all makes sense. <laughs> it's the same thing, really, in, in different dress. I mean, you know, too far forward over here in single weapon, too far forward in shoulder. And, yeah. Uh, Well, but you know, uh, um, on the other hand, that the last time you went through, there was definite improvement. Okay. That's probably enough uh, for today, unless you have other questions. No, that that is enough if I'm able to get that all into practice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're not. Not doing a, a a whole lot. That's quite a bit, but <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Which class, actually? Yes. <laughs> Good. Lots of stuff to work on. Oh, always. Yeah. <laughs> I um. I'm still working on all the things in God's that I'm to talking to you about. <laughs> well, that's as it should be. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Uh, I should make it tomorrow morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> um, I need to drive my wife to get a spinal shot uh, for her. Sciatica uh -huh. six fifteen, <laughs> so it means getting up quite early. Uh, and we'll be back in plenty of time. The question is whether I'll still be awake. <laughs> well, I will hope crawl to back see into bed. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I should, you know, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be awake, and I should. Yeah. <laughs> you know.
enough energy to make it through the class. You know, okay. So. <laughs> but just to, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, thanks for, for the. Yep. Uh... <laughs> we cross our fingers that this is going to 